Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Give him another round of applause for coming up and making the joyful noise unto the Lord. Glad to see everybody out on the Lord's Sabbath day. Like I said earlier, this is what the Lord commanded us to do, which the world is not doing. So we don't want to be like them because if you read the Bible, when the Lord comes back, even though he's going to give them a chance to repent, the world is, as a whole is going to be rebelling against the Lord. That's why when we read the book, they say all the tribes of the earth shall mourn when they see him coming. But if you've been doing what he said, you're going to be glad, whether you're living or dead, because the dead will rise, and that's the subject of today's lesson, because one of the first things the false church did was change the Sabbath day and then start teaching false doctrine. So we're going to keep the Sabbath day, because in the truth of the Bible, the Bible speaks about the resurrection of the dead. It don't speak about going to heaven or going to a place of torment or called hell. Because if you read the Bible, you'll find out hell is a state of condition. It's not a literal place. In fact, Isaiah the prophet in the fifth chapter said, we're in hell now. He said, you're going to go into captivity. Therefore, hell have enlarged herself. Go back and read the fifth chapter of Isaiah. In fact, it's hell on earth now. That's why you can't hardly walk down the street if you don't have the peace of God with you in your mind without being fearful because people are doing evil things in the streets. In fact, when, before we left, I heard a sister was in her house minding her own business, an elder sister. They broke in her house, tied up, and took all her goods. So you got that kind of stuff going on. See? So we want to deal with the truth for the Bible so we can uh, fear less and less and have hope in God more and more. So the title of today's lesson is Jesus and the Resurrection. We're going to show you that Jesus, the apostles, and the prophets taught the resurrection. If you've been around here long, you know, or just short, you would know. That that's what we teach because that's what the Bible teaches. So we come at it different ways because the more ways you come at it makes it more clearer to see. And if something is clearer to see to you, then you can have hope in it because you can see it, you can believe it. So we're in Matthew 24 now. This when the Lord was here walking among us. He had come down and dwelt among men to show us how we should walk and how we should treat each other, which we still got a long way to go. You know? We're in Matthew 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1 when we get there. Matthew 24 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. What did it say? And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and the disciples came to him, for to show him the buildings of the temple. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Go ahead. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That's right. So the apostles was asking them, when, when this... Uh, 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 gonna come to pass that this temple gonna be destroyed, and then what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? And if you look around the world today, you know this thing can't last too much longer if you understand the prophecy of the scripture. So we are close to the Lord's second coming. I don't know how close, but we close. So we want to get closer to God and believe in what He teaches through His apostles and His prophets which I recorded from Genesis to Revelation. But go ahead, brother. What did he say? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. First thing he said, take, pay attention. Take heed. That's what take heed means. Pay attention that no man deceive you. And the world didn't take that warning because this world have been deceived. That's why they think 
time you die, you go to heaven, or time you die, you go to a place of torment called hell. And there's no such thing. When you die, we're going to show you you lay in the ground till the Lord come and raise you out the ground. See, That's why the Lord said the righteous have hope in their death because they know if they die right, Jesus is going to raise them and change them and give them power like he got. Go ahead and read, brother. But many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. It already didn't happen, people. His name is Jesus. Christ is just a title. It means anointed one, just like Messiah. See? So they came with his name. They got the right name. They got the name Jesus. They're going to be hollering it up and down tomorrow all over the world. But they're going to be deceiving many because they're going to be teaching them. Like, when, when you die, you go into heaven and you're going to be smiling down. Or when you die, you're going to a place called hell and you're going to be getting tormented. We're going to show you what the Bible says. But go ahead, read on, bro. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Watch your TV, people. They're increasing. You got wars all over the planet. See? And many more countries is starting to engage in warfare. Everybody talking about arming themselves and going to war. But go ahead, read, bro. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. That's in different places. Once again, watch your news. Sometimes people need to turn that world news on and see what's happening. See? And you'll see everything Jesus said is on the rise and increasing. Let's skip down to verse 11, though, what it say. And many false prophets shall rise. And shall deceive many. From, from coast to coast. Go ahead. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's right. So iniquity is sin or breaking of God's law. Because man continually breaking God's law, he is getting colder and colder. See? When he's talking about cold, he's talking about no natural affection. See? That's why people will kill you over a few dollars. Over your gym shoes, over your jacket. They don't like the way they, that you looked at them when you passed by them on the expressway. See? Because man is getting cold. He don't have no feelings no more because he is continually sinning. So we don't want to be among them. So let's go to John 5 now. Let's see what Jesus said about what happened to the dead. Nowhere will you see it come out the mouth of the Lord when he came in the flesh or out in the mouth of any of the apostles that he was going to take you to heaven. Yet the whole world believed that every funeral you go to, yeah, they gone on to heaven. Even if the person is what they call a rotten person, they say he gone on to heaven. Huh? He, was, he, was, he was very good. Anyway, John 5, let's see what the Lord said, what the dead is. Let's go to John 5 and 28. What did it say, bro? Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. He said the hour is coming. In other words, this is in the future. This is when he come back. See, All that, notice what he said it was, uh, that are in the graves, not in heaven. Shall hear his voice. Go ahead. And shall come forth. Uh -huh. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. That's right. So both, both good and evil are in the grave until the Lord come back. See? There ain't nowhere else, no place else. We're going to show you they don't know nothing. They don't see nothing. They don't hear nothing. They are really asleep until the Lord come back. Just like you sleep in your bed at night. Let's go to Acts, the 24th chapter. Now let's see if Paul taught anything different. See? Let's see if Paul taught anything different. Because they think Paul came up with his own stuff. Now they just don't understand what Paul is saying. So we're in Acts 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10, and then we're going to skip. Acts 24 and 10. What does this say, bro? 
Then Paul, after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. That's right. So I just wanted you to see that this is Paul giving this uh, answer to the governor. Let's see what else he said. Let's skip down to verse 13 and continue. What does it say? Neither can they prove the thing whereof they now accuse me. That's right. When you know the truth, people can always be accusing you, trying to find fault. So they was trying to find some fault with Paul. He said they can't prove none of that stuff they talking about. But go ahead, read up. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Some things. All. You see, all things. So Paul believed what was written in the law. See? But the people nowadays, they don't even want to hear that. Tell them, we ain't about that law. But the apostle who you claim you believe in say he believed all things that's written in the law and in the prophets. Go ahead. And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there should be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and and unjust. That's right. So Paul is saying the same thing that Jesus said. Whether you die in righteousness or whether you die in wickedness, you're going to get raised from the dead. We're going to find out after the resurrection is the judgment. That's why we should pay attention to what we do while we walk this life we walk it now. Because what we do while we walk this walk now is this life now is going to determine whether we be in the resurrection of life or be in the resurrection of damnation. See? So we want to take heed what we do. Let's go to Isaiah, the 26th chapter now, and see that the prophet, one of the righteous men that died, let's see what he, what he said he was going to be. Was he going to heaven? Nope. He knew he wasn't going to heaven. He knew he was going to the dust from whence he was taken out of. A man was took out the dust. Mm -hmm. And that's where he go back to. He can make all them fables up all he want to. Don't mean nothing. And he ain't got no Bible to back up his fable because it's a fable. It ain't the truth. Isaiah 26, and we're going to pick it up at verse 19. Isaiah 26 and verse 19. What did it say, brother? Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. So he talking to the Lord. He said the men that have died in you shall live together with my dead body. See, so he know that the men that died in Christ are dead and he was going to die. What else did he say? Shall they arise. Shall they arise. Well, from the dead. See, just like you, we arise from our bed this morning. The Lord is going to arise the dead out the grave. But well, we're going to find out it ain't going to happen until Jesus come back. It ain't happening now. Everybody that's ever died beside Jesus is still dead. But go ahead, read up. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. Well, in the dust, in the grave, like Jesus said. Not awake and sing, you that dwell in heaven. See? Because the good and the evil Goes to the grave until the Lord raises them from it. But go ahead, read on. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, uh -huh. and the earth shall cast out the dead. That's right, they're going to cast out the dead because God's going to tell the earth, cast the dead out of you so they can get their judgment, whether it's good or it's evil. But go ahead, read on. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chamber. And shut thy door about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Go ahead. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. He coming out of heaven. That's his place. He going to punish the inhabitants of the earth because God have gave the earth all this time to turn to him and obey him. And the earth is steady revealing against the Lord. Every one of his commandments that the Lord gave including the Sabbath day, man rebels against it. 
So he, when the time has come for him to measure out that punishment, he's going to do it. He's going to come out of his place. He's going to come out of heaven. Even though man think he can stop him in the battle of Armageddon, he's going to come and punish the inhabitants of the earth. What are you going to punish him for? Go ahead. For their iniquity. For transgressing his law. See? Because we all didn't broke it. So the men that don't stop, they continuing on to transgress the law, then the ones he's going to punish. See? Because he gave everybody a chance to turn from their iniquity or turn from their sin. But those that don't be the turn from him, when he comes back, he said, I'm going to punish them for that. Go ahead. The earth also shall disclose her dip, her blood and shall no more cover her slain. That's right. The earth shall disclose her blood and no more cover her slain. Now let's go see what happened when the Lord died because he came and to die. Let's see, did he go to the grave? Yes, he did. He had to rise from the dead himself. See? In fact, he is the first one that rose from the dead. Immortal, I should say. See? Can't, can't die no more. See? The rest of us, if we die, have to wait till it's coming. See? Luke, the 24th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We just like to point little things out so that you can think about it and maybe get somebody else to think about it so they won't be deceived because the whole earth has been deceived. They don't know that the dead is dead. See, they tell you a lot to what they ain't dead, they living on. They done made the transition. No, you haven't. Only transition you're going to make is back to the dust from once God took man out of those that die. Luke 24 and 1. What did it say, brother? Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. Uh -huh. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Wait a minute now. They tell you in the, in the churches or the Christians, as they call themselves, that when you die, your body stay there and your soul departs and go to heaven. See? Why, why, why did they find Jesus' body? Here, read that again. Verse 2. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Uh-oh, how come his body still wasn't there? If anybody's soul was going to go to heaven, surely it should have been Jesus. And he should have left his body right there. See? See, that in itself shows you that's false teaching. Because Jesus' body was gone. Because we'll show you when you rise, your body rises. It just get changed. See? In a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, Paul told us in 1 Corinthians 15. Because this is a mortal body we got here. This body dies, but the body that God going to give man at the resurrection of your spiritual body. It can't die. It lives forever. But go ahead and read, brother. And it came to pass as they were perplexed. Much perplexed. Much perplexed. They're about, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Go ahead. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead. Wait a minute. So it must be two things, different things then. They asked them, say, these are angels. They asked them, why are you seeking the living among the dead? Because they do the two different things. See? But they tell the whole world, you don't die. You still alive. See? Looking down. Or getting burnt in some fire. Which the wicked will be getting burned in fire, but it's a it ain't here yet. It ain't going to be brought into existence till Jesus comes. He's going to bring the lake of fire in existence when he comes back. Revelation 19 will show you that. But go ahead. Read on, brother. He is not here, but is risen. So Jesus himself had to rise from the dead. See? Go ahead. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. 
saying the Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. So he was put to death, people. So he was dead until he rose again. Like all men, they are dead in women, child, whatever died among mankind is still dead until he rises again. Go ahead. And they remembered his words. He said they remembered his words. So let's go uh, down to verse 22 and see what else happened. He's going to repeat himself. He's going to say they didn't find his body. He's he making a point that when you rise, your body rises. When you die, your body lays down. Just like when we lay down in our beds. It's just called a grave. Same. But and instead of waking up in the morning, those that die can't wake up till Jesus come. We're going to show you. But go ahead and read at the 22. What did it say? Yeah. And certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body. See how he keep making that point? They found not his body. See? See, cause that's gotta get that's what gotta get raised is the body. Don't nothing leave you and go nowhere except for your breath. We're gonna show you that. The only thing that leaves man at his death is his breath. Nothing else. Sometimes you might call it spirit, because God sometimes calls our breath spirit. But nevertheless, it's just what we breathe, and it's in our nose. Go ahead, read up. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. That's right. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Go ahead. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? That's right. So it was prophesied that Jesus was going to come and die for the sins of man and rise again and take his sins upon him so man can have a chance to rise and get eternal life because we lost our chance for eternal life in the Garden of Eden. But like Psalm 69 say. Jesus came to restore that which he took not away. He restored us access to eternal life. But go ahead and read. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets. That's right. So he started in, in Genesis. That's when Moses started, right? See? And that's where you should read the Bible. Begin in Genesis. Read the whole thing. See? Then you'll know what it say yourself. Go ahead. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. That's right. So we can find Jesus from Genesis to Revelation. So let's get down to verse uh, 44 and continue what it say. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. That's right. He said it must be fulfilled. So everything that he was supposed to do at his first coming have been fulfilled, but it's the things he's supposed to do at his second coming have not been fulfilled yet. And by people not understanding that, they're being deceived. See? Because Jesus is prophesied to come back and raise the dead. See? He is prophesied to come back and rule over the earth with the saints. He is prophesied to restore Israel back to our land. All those things is prophesied, but man don't know nothing about them. See? They think Israel back home, they think when you die you go here or there. See? They don't know that it's another kingdom that's going to be set up on the earth, which the sun going to reign over for a thousand years with the saints and then later on, the father coming down after judgment day. They don't know those things. So let's see what Paul had to say in, uh, to Timothy. Let's go to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Let's see what Paul had to say about the second coming of the Lord.
2 Timothy 4 and 1, what does it say, brother? I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. That's right. So it's not judgment day, but when Jesus comes, he's going to make a judgment call. He's going to determine who is going to get changed into an immortal among the living. That's the quick. And who is going to get changed among the dead. And who is going to remain asleep for another thousand years. Because if you read the Bible, those that don't make the resurrection of the first we have to sleep for a thousand years or stay dead. Mm -hmm. That's why we should be careful how we live this life. Because there is a judgment. But anyway, go ahead. Preach the word. Uh -huh. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Let's teach the people, he's telling them. See, doctrine is teaching. Because the people haven't been taught about God, that's why they got all these fables in their mind. See? That's why they don't really believe in God, because they can't even read what they believe. See, we want you to read so you can believe in the real truth. But go ahead, read. But a time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. Or sound teaching. That time is here. People... When you try to tell them what the word of God say, a lot of people tell me, I don't want to hear that. See? And this is the word that's going to give eternal life or disobedience to it, going to give eternal damnation. Go ahead, read. But after their own lust, should they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. That's right. They're going to seek people that, that tell them what they want to hear. That's what he means. They're going to heap to themselves, having itching ears. Just tell me what I want to hear, and I, I say I didn't serve God. Go ahead, read. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. That's right. Going to heaven is one of the biggest ones. When you die, time you die, you gone somewhere. No, no. That's one of the biggest fables. The Bible don't teach that. But go ahead and read. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Go ahead. Make full proof of thy ministry. That's right. He's telling Timothy, he say, you make full proof of your ministry, Timmy. Don't be out there teaching them lies in the name of Jesus. Prove to the people what you are talking about. So let's see what the Lord, he say he's going to reward, he's going to judge the quick and the dead. Let's see he, what he's going to judge him by. Let's go to Matthew, the 16th chapter now. And we're going to expose another favor because they say you ain't got to do no work. Since Jesus came, he did it all for you. Let's see what Jesus said he's going to judge everybody by. See, because see, the world is full of fables in it, and most of it is in the name of Jesus. Fulfilling what he said, deceiving many. Matthew 16, we're just going to read that one verse, 27. What does it say, bro? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. According to his work. According to his work. So why are they telling you you ain't got to do no work? If that's what Jesus is going to reward you by your work. I see I uh, will continue. Isaiah 40, what it say? We're going to Isaiah 40. Uh-huh. Right. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Let's see what, what the apostle said, I mean what the prophet said. When you're going to get your reward. Is it time you die? Jesus just said he's going to do it when he come back. Let's see, did he tell the prophet anything different? When he going, when you, because if you're in heaven, you got your reward. If you was going there, or if you're in a place called hell, you got your reward. He ain't here, so how'd you get it? Huh? I got your money in your in my pocket, and I ain't there yet. You say I got my money. How is that possible? You gotta wait till I get there. So people have to wait till Jesus get here to get their reward. 
That's what he just said. Let's see, didn't he tell the prophet the same thing? Let's go to Isaiah 40, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. What did it say? Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, uh -huh. and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him. Wait a minute. His reward is with him once again. How are you going to get it before he get here? And get it to you. So that favor that they teaching the people is calling Jesus a lie. Now it's calling the prophet a lie. I already got my reward. I'm flying around heaven with Wayne. Go ahead and read. And his work before him. Uh huh. And his work before him. Now let's see, did anything change after the resurrection of Christ? Let's go to Revelations now, the 22nd chapter. Let's see what he tell John to write. When the people gonna get their reward? Revelations, the twenty second chapter, and we're gonna be getting at verse twelve. This after this is after everything is just about over. <laughs> yeah, Man is either in the lake of fire or he in the Father's kingdom at this time. But let's see what Jesus say right here at the 12. Go ahead, brother. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Wait a minute. Once again, it's with him. He said, I come quickly. I got, my, I got the reward with me. And what's going to determine what reward you get? Go ahead. To give every man according as his work shall be. Once again, everybody's going to be rewarded according as their work shall be. That's why we got to start trying to do some good works in the sight of the Lord. What's good works? Keeping his commandments. That's good work. If the world kept the commandments of God, he wouldn't have to come back with the fury that he's coming back. Go ahead. I am Alpha. And Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Wait a minute. I thought we didn't have to keep the law for God. They done away with it. Some laws was done away with, but not the royal law, the commandment law. That's still good, even in Revelation 22. Go ahead. That they may have right to the tree of life. That they may have right to live forever. That's the tree of life. To get eternal life. See? Those that don't keep return and start keeping his commandments, they ain't going to have no right to eternal life. They're going to have the right to eternal damnation. That's why the Lord wants to take heed what we do in this world, in this life here. Go ahead. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Talking about New Jerusalem. So you, in order to get into the Father's kingdom, New Jerusalem being the headquarters, you got to keep the commandments. Other than that, you ain't got no right to enter in. Go ahead, read. For without our dogs. Without what? Without the city. Outside the city in the lake of fire. Our dogs. He ain't talking about the four-legged camp. He talking about those that treated their neighbor like a dog and didn't never repent and stop it. Dogs. Who else? And sorcerers. Uh, witchcraft. Go ahead. And whoremongers. Uh-oh. Couldn't stop jumping from one person to the next one. Whoremongers. See? The Lord wants us to cut that out if we do that. Go ahead, read. And murderers. Killers. Murderers. Streets full of murder. Man don't know. You you're going to get judged for that if you don't change that. People paint little teardrops under their eye for how many people they didn't murder. Wearing it as what they think is a badge of honor. No, that's condemnation. You out there murdering people, thinking you tough. Get it for the fight. Go ahead, read. And idolaters. Uh huh. Worshipful idols, huh? Bound to the statue. Or got that picture on your wall praying to it. That's idolatry. God don't like that stuff. Go ahead. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 
The Lord wants us to stop lying. We have trouble with that a lot of times, but it can't be done through Jesus. But go ahead, read. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify to you these things in the churches. In the where? In the churches. How come the churches ain't telling you that? Huh? They ain't telling you got to stop doing that. They saying all you got to do is call Jesus and everything's fine. You got to do some work, too. You got to do what Jesus wants you to do. It was just a lip service. Go ahead and read. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So we see that the Lord, uh, his reward is with him, and he's going to give everybody according to their works, according to the Bible. Now let's see what else. Let's go to Hebrews 9 now. And we're going to pick it up at verse 27. Hebrews 9. And 27. Because you might say, well, why should I be concerned? Okay. Let's, let's take a look at it. Hebrews 9, 27. What did it say, brother? And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Uh-oh. So it's appointed for man once to die, whether he die or not, because the Bible tells us everybody ain't going to die. Some people are going to be alive when Jesus comes and be given immortality if they have served him sufficiently in this world and in this life. But he says appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. So man going to be judged on what he did before he died. We're going to show you that. That's why it's, it's a good thing to do good things just in case you happen to die. Not saying you will because it's so close to the coming, the second coming. But just in case. See, it's appointed unto man once to die, but after death, the judgment. Let's see why is he says it's appointed unto man once to die. Let's go to Genesis 3 and see, did man bring death on himself? See, he brought death on himself in the Garden of Eden, disobeying God, just like he bringing eternal death on himself now. Study transgressing God's word and not paying attention to it. Not knowing after you die, you're going to have to stand before the Lord. If you don't make the first resurrection. Genesis 3. And we're going to pick it up. Read the whole story on your own. We're going to read when God pronounced the sentence on Adam. And it's still happening every day. That's why you see them funeral processions. Huh? You see them cars with that hearse. Because of what Adam did. Other than that. Wouldn't have been no death. If you read Romans the fifth chapter. Paul told the Romans. Adam brought death on all men. Just like Jesus brought life on all men, those that obey him. Romans, I mean, uh, Genesis 3.17, I'm sorry. Genesis 3.17. What did it say, brother? And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou should not eat of it. So it was a commandment. The Lord told him, Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Him and his wife did it anyway. See, See just like man, God said, Thou should not murder, and man do it anyway. See, God said, Thou should not steal, man do it anyway. Same thing. That's why man need to turn. But go ahead, read. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. That's right, go ahead. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Uh huh. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. To you what? Return unto the ground. Because that's where God... Form man out the dust of the earth. So man's true homecoming, because a homecoming 
is going back to where you came from. See, just like if you from Mississippi, you're going back to Mississippi for a homecoming. Now they're telling you, well, they done made their homecoming. They were in heaven. Man, they ain't never been to heaven, so how could that be his homecoming? You don't make his homecoming until he returned to the ground. Now you done made your homecoming. Go ahead. For out of it was thou taken. For out of it was thou taken. Go ahead. For dust thou art. For dust thou art. And Go unto ahead. dust shall thou return. And unto dust shall thou return. So that's where God took man out to dust. And that's where he goes when he dies. And he stays there. We're going to show you until the Lord bring him out to dust. See. See. The resurrection of the dead. So let's see if the Psalms, uh, if David wrote anything different in the Psalms. Let's go to Psalms 104. Because the Bible is consistent. Yes, it is. See, they made up a bunch of fables in the name of the Lord. And the whole world believed in. Psalms 104 and we're going to pick it up at verse 27, what it says. These wait all upon thee. Talking about everything that gets some food, wait all upon God. God is the one that allows you to get your food, whether you man or beast. Read the whole thing on your own, you'll see that. Go ahead. That thou mayest give them their meat in due season. Uh-huh. That thou givest them, they gather. Talking about the Lord. Go ahead. Thou openest thy hand, they are filled with good. Uh huh. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Uh huh. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. That's right. So David said the same thing Genesis say. He said, "You take away their breath, because when God takes the breath from man, just like He gave breath to man, that's when man dies." And return from the dust from whence he was taken. See? That's why they have to put that embalming fluid on you so they can kind of slow the process down. So you, they can have that funeral because man started turning to dust time. He stopped breathing. He started stinking. But anyway, let's keep, let's keep on Psalms 146. Let's see what else happens when that breath go out. When God say, okay, stop breathing. Time for you to rest, because that's all it is. Death is a rest, people. It's a sleep until the Lord comes. Psalms 104, and we're going to pick it up at verse 146. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my fault. We just read 104. 146, you are right. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1, what it says. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Well, he said, I while I live, because he knew once you die, you can't praise the Lord. The dead can't say nothing, don't see nothing, don't hear nothing, don't feel nothing. They finished until the Lord raised him from the dead. He said, while I live, will I praise the Lord. Go ahead. I will sing praise unto my God. While I have any being. That's right. While he's still living. Go ahead. Put not your trust in princes. Nor in the son of man. In whom there is no help. That's right. Put your trust in the Lord. Because man stop breathing. He finished. See. The, God, the Lord live forever. Been living forever. Always will. See? He give us a chance to join him. If we serve him in this world. We get a chance to live forever. Go ahead. His breath goeth forth. His breath goeth forth. Tell my man. Go ahead. He returned to his earth. He returned. Once I see the vow is consistent. I always tell my returning back to the ground. Returning back to the ground. And, it, and you know it's the truth because when man died, they put him in that casket. Where they put the casket? <laughs> the ground. Go ahead. In that very day. His thoughts perish. He said that very day his thoughts perish. He don't think no more. He don't feel no more. 
He don't hate no more. He don't love no more. He waiting on the Lord to raise him from the dead. Let's go to Ecclesiastes the ninth uh, uh, chapter and see what he say. It's all through the book. Yet they tell you smiling down from heaven. In order to smile down, you got to be thinking about something to smile about. If your thoughts perish, then what you, how could you be smiling? Mm -hmm. You can't. That's why when somebody's called a vegetable, they just land there. No emotions, no nothing. No thoughts. Death is like that, only they ain't breathing no more. Now, we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Ecclesiastes 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. What it say? This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. Yeah, you're talking about death, see? But man brought it on himself by disobeying God. Go ahead. That there is one event unto all, yeah. Also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. Uh -huh. And madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. They go where? To the dead. That's, that's where man goes. He goes to the ground. But that madness that's in his heart while he lives, through the Lord, he can keep it in check <laughs> and walk in the wisdom of God. But it's there all the time. See? Tries to surface and rule. But anyway, go ahead. But to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Yes, he is. Go ahead. For the living know that they shall die. That's right. We all know it's a chance for anybody to die. See? Not saying you will, but it's a chance. That's why we want to live this life right. So just in case. Go ahead, read. But the dead know not anything. The dead, dead what? Know not anything. In other words, when he died, his thoughts perish, just like the psalm said. You don't know nothing. Go ahead. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Talking about in this world, they ain't got no reward. They got a reward after the resurrection. But go ahead. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. That's right. Everything that they was thinking about is gone. Once you go into the grave. Go ahead. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. That's right. Talking about this life here. It's over with. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go thy way. Eat thy bread with joy and drink thy wine with a merry heart. For God, for God now accepteth thy works. Go ahead. Let thy garments be always white. And let thy head lack no ointment. That's right. The garments he's talking about is not no physical garments. See, in Revelation, it tell you uh, the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Yes, sir. So he's telling you the best of your ability, keep your mind as clean as you can mm -hmm. through the word of God. That's your garment. That's the garments he's talking about. Yes, and let your head lack no ointment, which is the word of God. That's why David said here, he anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. The oil he was talking about was the spirit of God. That's the ointment he talking about put on your head. So that's what's going to clean the head up. We'll go ahead and read. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in this life. In this life, not the next one. Go ahead. And in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Go ahead. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whether thou goest. So all these prophets and apostles and Jesus himself saying you're going to the grave. But man telling you you're going somewhere else. I pray we believe in the word of God. So when we, we want to be careful how we go to that grave, though, because whatever we've done, it goes to the grave with us. Let's show you what we mean. Let's go to Job, the 20th chapter. 
whether it was good or bad, it goes to the grave with you. And the Lord, when he rides you, that's what he's going to judge you back. Because God keeps books. See, a lot of people that don't read Revelation, he can talk about a book of life. And he said the dead are going to be judged after things written in the books according to their works. But man don't believe that. He believe everything except for what the books say. Yeah. Job the 20th chapter. Let's see what Job talking about. We're going to read it. Uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Job 20 and verse 4. What did it say, brother? Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth? He said, don't you know, since man was placed on the earth? What else did it say? That the triumphing of the wicked is short. It's short because man's life is short. He don't live no long time. Even if you get to 100 years, what's that? That ain't too much of none compared to eternity. That's how long God lives. And that's what he got to offer man is eternal life or eternal damnation, whichever one he lives his life about. But go ahead. And the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. It's just for a moment. It's just for a short time. So let's go on and read the whole thing on y'all. Let's skip down to verse 11, what it says. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, uh -huh. which shall lie down with him in the dust. It's going to do what? Lie down with him in the dust. So whatever you do, the Lord, however you die, that's what he's going to be looking at when you rise. In other words, his works followed him to the grave. This is the wicked. Let's see if there's anything different with the righteous. Let's go to Revelation, the 14th chapter now. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Revelation 14 is 12. What does this say, my brother? Here is the patience of the saints. He said, here is the patience of the saints. So if you want to be a saint, this is part of the things you have to do. Saint means to be sanctified or set apart. He say this is the patience of the saints. Go ahead. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That's right. So that's what a saint does. One that's set apart from this world. That's what he's talking about. Apart from the world, he keeps the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. This is the righteous. 